Look at this. I've called this one Welcome to the Fun House um, because it might be helpful to think about those fun house mirrors, you know? That's kind of what we're dealing with when we talk about. Uh, I like fun house mirrors. They're creepy, weird, you know, but that's what we're talking about is things that affect the shape of things on our pictures, right? So last week we talked about things that affect the way the picture looks, like its brightness and its contrast. Today we're going to be talking about geometrical stuff. So anytime you see the word geometrical, just think about the shape of stuff, right? I don't know why I'm like super nervous right now. Um, <laughs> learning objectives that we've got for you. Uh, I don't know why. I, I just I, I feel nervous right now. I think it's I, I, I the, the the fun house. Okay, the the fun house thing freaks me out a little bit, right? Uh, the so I, when I called this thing the Welcome to the Fun House, it, it just it freaked me out a little bit. I, fun houses are kind of scary, and maybe that's it. I don't know. Also, it it, it I will I'll go ahead and put this out there. It is probably the best rock and roll album to come out in 1970. It was called Fun House by Iggy Pop and the Stooges. It's an amazing album, so I guess I'm thinking about that as well, that, that album. Um, yeah, I know that seems really random. Yeah, just putting that out there. So uh, the learning objectives we've got, though, uh, are define image sharpness, spatial resolution, talk about stuff that causes penumbra. That's a big, big takeaway is penumbra and defining that term. We're gonna to need to be able to do some math related to unsharpness and relative sharpness, magnification factor, shape sharp, shape distortion, and finally define image resolution, kind of that umbrella term. We've already started talking about contrast, but we're gonna define the big umbrella term resolution under which contrast lives. All of this stuff isn't going away. It's staying with us. Um, all this stuff is important. Uh, and I went ahead and shared an email with y'all that I sent to the seniors, right? Because around this time next year, you're going to be freaking out because you're going to be preparing for the registry and you're going to be asking me a whole lot of questions about math because you didn't pay attention in this class, right? Um, so I'm just floating that out there. Pay attention to the math. It is super impactful to every single x-ray that you ever take. And there's really only five formulas that we need to know. One of them you're going to be learning today. All right, so we're, we're heading down the right path. <laughs> All right, sharpness and spatial resolution. So the textbook defines uh, sharpness as the abruptness with which an edge stops. All right. Um, ART uses the term spatial resolution, and I use the terms pretty interchangeably. Of the two, I veer more towards spatial resolution because it has significance when we go on to talk about digital imaging. That's pretty much the way that computers, computer language uh, addresses the concept. But what we're talking about is if we look at this picture here, I don't know if you can see it, but the, the, the smiley face on the left looks kind of blurry. Mm -hmm. the, the edges are not very abrupt. There's some kind of gray area, and then all of a sudden we, we wind up with the white background, right? And then if we sharpen the image, we get a little less of that gray area, and then we sharpen it twice, and we have this nice clean line. It looks kind of pixelated now, but we have a nice clean line between the black of the smiley face and the white of the background. So that's what we're talking about, um, is those changes in sharpness. But first we need to talk about what's happening with that gray area. Um, that gray area we call penumbra, right? And it is the blurry or partial shadow that's projected at the edge of objects when we x-ray them. Um, and if we're curious, I think our textbook does a really good job of kind of discussing this. And there's an illustration, I think on page 228, that actually shows you geometrically how to plot penumbra. You can draw these lines on the uh, image. And so they've drawn four lines, for example. So this would be our focal spot here. This is the object that's being x-rayed, and this is the resulting image. And what they've drawn is they've drawn a line that's coming from this end of the focal spot down to the edge of the object, and then a line down to the side of the object. This area right here between the two lines is the area of penumbra. So it's something we can mathematically measure. It is synonymous with unsharpness and blurriness. I'll say that again. Penumbra is synonymous with unsharpness. It is something we can mathematically measure. All of those things are important. 
that it's mathematically measurable so we can scientifically evaluate it and that it's um, synonymous with unsharpness because what we're going for is is that sharpness we want edge definition we want to be able to see things in order to make diagnoses if we can't tell because the image is blurry whether or not something is a fracture that's a problem right umbra is the term relating to the true shadow so inside this illustration here the umbra is the darker blue and the penumbra is the lighter blue right um, the problem with this relationship between umbra and penumbra and we will be coming back to this well this is not going away but the problem with it is that as we increase penumbra it doesn't just ex increase outward it increases inward it actually eats away at the umbra so penumbra doesn't just increase outward it increases inward as well and it starts to impact the actual true shadow and so we call it, we talk about this invading the umbra um, when the two penumbra overlap with like two related objects they will appear to be a single object so if two penumbra overlap they will on the radiograph appear to be a single object so if I'm just looking at one object it's not necessarily a problem but if I'm looking at multiple objects having a large penumbra is going to impact what I'm looking at so again in thinking about unsharpness again this is a mathematical concept and this spread of penumbra is indicated by the spread of lines projected onto the image receptor so we can imagine the focal spot and just draw lines down and we know mathematically what the area of unsharpness should be um, I'm gonna go ahead and pause here because I want us to complete some of these exercises Now, if there, if there is a place where it might start to get kind of confusing, it is in the fact that we can, we can flip this stuff around. By inverting the sharpness formula, we can calculate relative sharpness. So now I'm not thinking about how unsharp it is. I'm thinking about how relatively sharp is it compared to the degree of unsharpness, right? So this is not, this number is not going to, it's going to be a dimensionless number meaning it's not going to have centimeters or millimeters or something behind it. It's just going to be a number, and it gives me a value that lets me know how sharp is it relative to other images. So before we were finding the unsharpness, now we're finding the sharpness. Correct. Yeah. Specifically, we're finding the relative sharpness. Relative sharpness. Okay. So the point here is that sharpness is not mathematically measurable. What is mathematically measurable? Unsharpness. Unsharpness. I can look at the area of the shadow. I can say the penumbra is this big, period. I can't really then also say, well, then the amount of sharpness is this. There's no way to measure that, right? But I can measure the size of that shadow. OK. This one is super important. This is in that list of the five formulas that you just need to go ahead and have tattooed on your wrist or something. No, don't do that because it will probably make you cover it up while you're taking the registry. But magnification factor is super important. Um, and magnification, as we've already talked about in envisioning ourselves with the basketball in the backyard, we already kind of know how magnification works, right? As the basketball gets further and further away from the wall, the shadow of the basketball grows, right? Same thing is happening with the x-rays that we're taking. As the objects get further and further away from the image receptor, the size, the magnified size of the object grows and the spatial resolution decreases. So it gets bigger but less sharp. So another term for this might be called size distortion. And it's important to stress that with magnification, the size of the object is going to increase in all directions. That's why we'll call it size distortion. The size of it increases in all directions equally, pretty much. 
Um, so we could think about this as the difference between the size of the object and the size of its projected image, the size of the shadow that it's casting, right? And both the width and the length of the image will increase. Magnification, the formula for it is SID over SOD. We can also set it up as this kind of equivalency of image size over object size equals SID over SOD. Okay, now I'm going to change gears slightly and now talk about shape distortion. So magnification we're going to call size distortion. The last thing that we're going to talk about before talking about image resolution is shape distortion. Shape distortion differs from size distortion in that the length and the width will be altered to different degrees. So now we really have stepped into the funhouse. This is standing in front of the funhouse mirror and your legs appear much longer than they actually are, right? The term for that would be elongation. This increases the length of the object. So um, image A, if this is the uh, actual uh, bone here, this actual humerus, image A demonstrates uh, elongation. You know, I take that back. Image A demonstrates magnification, I apologize. So this is an equal amount of size change, image A. The, if you look closely at the distal portion of the bone and the proximal portion of the bone, they are equally increased in size. So it has increased in size in all directions. Versus this bad boy here, it is elongated because the humerus, the humeral head appears smaller, right? While this part right here appears bigger. So it has been elongated. Right? Um, it's an increased length. The way that this is caused is by angling the image receptor or being off center. So if I have the part angled in relationship to the image receptor, or I'm sorry, if I have the image receptor itself um, angled, if I have the image receptor itself angled. The other form of shape distortion is foreshortening, which is going to cause the object to appear shorter than the actual, I mean the image to appear shorter than the actual object. So that is option B here on this uh, thing. We've got a decreased length of the object. This is caused by angling the body part, angling the body part. Now, I know that this can seem a little confusing. This is why, we, again, we brought our flashlights. We're going to look at this some in just a minute. Okay, so I've used this term quite a bit now, resolution. The big umbrella term is image resolution. And when we use this term, we're talking about the total amount of useful information. What resolved? Um, so sometimes people talk about after an argument, they're seeking resolution, right? It would be the total restitution of whatever people were arguing about. In this case, we're, we're trying to figure out what the pathology is, and this is the total amount to which we were able to figure out what the pathology is. So it's that ability to distinguish between two adjacent details in the image as being actually separate and distinct from each other. Now, we've already talked about a number of things and procedures that affect resolution, right? Like, for example, if something is superimposed, that affects resolution, right? Um, beneath the overall umbrella term of resolution, we can divide it out into two really critical things. The first I've already defined spatial resolution, which is that degree of sharpness versus unsharpness of detail. And we've said that the unsharpness part of that is a mathematically measurable thing. Contrast resolution is a little bit more foggy, right? It's something you know it if you see it, but it's more difficult sometimes to describe. So I very carefully defined it as the degree of differentiation in brightness between two adjacent details, right? Um, so uh, as I'm looking at them and I'm considering, for example, from lab one, I have a ball, I have some water, I have a bucket handle, when I look and I say, how can I tell that's a ball, that's water, and that's a bucket handle? 
Well, the reason I can make those distinctions is because of the degree, the different degrees of brightness in those objects. And so because they've got different degrees of brightness, the ball floating in the water has a different degree of brightness than the water. So I can distinguish, I can say that's a contrast between the ball and the water, right? So they have a different amount of brightness. Contrast is different from brightness. It is distinct from brightness. So brightness is how much x-rays did it attenuate, right? The ball, how much x-rays did the ball attenuate? Contrast is thinking about both the ball and the water. How much x-rays did the ball attenuate versus how much x-rays did the water attenuate? So between the two of them, there are different brightness levels. I can say that there is some contrast between the two different brightness levels. Okay, and I do have some fun planned for us. So I've got this flashlight lab that my friend in Chicago sent me, and I think you'll enjoy it. This is a picture of Iggy Pop with David Bowie.